former Deputy Prime Minister Lord Heseltine is with us now. Hello to you, my Lord. Um, preferable to get a deal, which is reassuring. Um, how will last week's uh, events impact on the trade talks, um, do you think? I'm thinking particularly about uh, Dominic Cummings um, and Lee Kane going, and also the Prime Minister not able to have face-to-face -face talks if necessary. Well, I think they don't help, but I wouldn't over-exaggerate the significance of that. The facts are very clear. We are uh, poised on a situation of either no deal or um, probably quite a flimsy deal covering parts of the economy. And there are no good news stories in this. Uh, Brexit is going to be a disaster for this country. There's virtually no prospect of an easy deal with the United States. I myself don't think there ever was, but uh, it's even less likely now. And the really sort of depressing thing in all of this, whilst COVID looks as though there may be a way out with the vaccine and the testing, the really depressing thing is that the government is doing nothing to mobilise the British industrial and commercial economy for the fight to adjust to whatever deal happens over Brexit. Uh, there's a, a, an opportunity there to mobilise the economy led by the local elected mayors, and that is being ignored. Uh, there's progress under David Cameron and George Osborne, but that has all now been reversed in significant measure. And the enthusiasm and energies that need to be built up to help readjust our economy are simply not taking place. But if we, if we don't manage to reach a deal with our European friends by the end of the year, we leave on uh, world uh, trade terms, which means tariffs on traded goods, as, as our viewers will know this morning. But EU tariffs on most things are, are pretty low, less than 3%. Um, cars and agriculture, very different, but generally. So even if we did that, it would give us time then to negotiate deals with other parts of the world, wouldn't it? Well, we've been trying to do that for some time, and the outcome is minimal. Uh, there's been a deal with Japan, which broadly preserves the status quo uh, as though we had remained within the European Union. I can't think of any other significant range of deals that have taken place. Um, but I think you miss the important point that whilst you may think that the price increases of the tariffs are relatively unimportant, what about the delays at the frontiers? What about the forms and the regulations, the uncertainty, the breaking of supply lines? All of these things are the sort of hidden evil of creating barriers between ourselves and our most important export market. So it's not just a question about tariffs. It's the whole apparatus of leaving the arrangements we have carefully built up over the last 40 years. And I must say that personally, having watched this whole issue evolve from the Second World War, when we celebrated the anniversary just the other day, I couldn't help think that this was incredible to me, that Britain, who played such an incredible role in those wars, was the country that broke the political solution, which is the European Union, that was put in place to stop all that happening again. I cannot believe it is my country that has done this. You, you say there are other things as well as tariffs, you're quite right. Police and security uh, operations being one of them. The EU saying if we are out of the club, then we won't be able to access them as easily. Surely it's in the best interest of all for us to keep close in that regard. It would have been in the best interest of us all not to leave the European Union in the first place. And uh, we, we, we've mentioned tariffs, we've mentioned supply lines. What about the damage to the United Kingdom? The Irish issues are not resolved and are not resolved by WTO terms. Scotland is on the brink of voting to leave the United Kingdom. And all of these problems are there looming for one simple reason. It's our fault. We did it. 
And uh, there's no point in mincing one's language and pretending it's all going to be all right in the morning. It's not. And we need to be prepared, and we are not prepared. Um, nevertheless, we are where we are. Um, democratically, the people of the United Kingdom decided that they wanted to leave the European Union. Um, are you suggesting that it's still not too late to change their minds? It's not too late. It is too late now to actually stop, I'm afraid, the process. Um, it's quite interesting you asked me the question in, in the context of the resignation of two of the leaders who, once in power, indicated the sort of complete unsuitability that they were for the exercise of decision making as opposed to the making of populist noises that appealed to sections of the community. Who are you referring to? Oh, Dominic Cummings, obviously, and his colleague. Lee Kane, um, they have now left. Um, do you think that the Prime Minister may soften his view? Certainly, we saw a, a, a tweet uh, from our uh, spokesperson uh, leading the negotiations, uh, Lord Frost, in, uh, in the European Union. He's in Brussels today, as, as you know. Um, and it tended, some people are reading into the tweet that potentially he may still want to leave without a deal if necessary, but there may be some softening within government. Well, look, you and I have one thing in common, along with very, virtually everybody else. None of us actually know what is going on, because all we get is the spin. Both sides are preparing either to show that they themselves achieved a great victory, which is not conceivable because the other side is not going to suffer a great defeat. There has therefore to be compromises. Or they have to be their briefing in order to make sure that when it does collapse, someone else gets the blame. So we're being manipulated politically in that sense by the spin doctors. I don't know what the state of the real negotiations are, and there's no way I can know. Uh, so all I can do is to make judgments about the substantive conclusions that it might emerge, deal or no deal. Both are bad. A deal is just a little less bad. Um, my Lord, I'm sure we have more than one thing in common, but sadly we're out of time, so we can't go into it now, but it's always good to see you. Thank you for joining us on the programme this morning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Michelle.